All right, so now that we've kind of figured out what they are, let's go ahead and start looking at their notation. So notationally what we do, and let me go ahead and start with right here, uh, what we do is we define a function. So I got a function called f, and you'll notice that it's broken up. Here's where your rules will be, right? So this function has two different rules. f of x is equal to x, or f of x is equal to 5, all right? So there's two different rules, and then here, what we do is tell you the domain that I'm on. So in this part of the domain, we're uh, equal to uh, x, and in this part of the domain, our, our rule is 5. So kind of going back up to what we mentioned up here, let me go all the way back to our income tax one, right? So the taxes that I owe, right, here's what that would look like. We would actually have four different rules, right? It would be uh, 0, it would be 0.1 times x, it would be 0.25x, or it would be 0.39 of x, and again, x is the income that I have. And then this basic rule is on as, so, as long as we are between, let me just go ahead and put 40, uh, we'll, we'll truncate it uh, to, from 40,000. So if I stay between zero and 40 grand, my rule that uh, determines my tax is zero. Um, if I start from 40 and go up to 100 grand, right, so if my x falls in this uh, part of the domain, there's my rule. Uh, for the next section, uh, when we are from 100, oops, and x is to, what did I say, 250,000, right, then we are using that rule. And then if we take 250 and we're greater than or equal to x, then we're there. So again, to find a, to the notation behind a piecewise function is to use a curly bracket, right, list the number of rules that changes that we go through. So in our tax situation, there's four different rules, and then you list for, per each rule what domain value that rule is used. So that's what we're stuck with. You know, perhaps you think it would make more sense if we did something the other way around, but through the eight, through the time, that's where we've done. So let's go ahead then. Uh, what I've got, I've got a piecewise function here and a couple more on the next page, but let's just go ahead and first, before we do any sketching, let's find the points that are asked for. Let's just get used to using this, uh, this notation. So when I'm asking for f of negative 2, remember 1x creates 1y. So I can't use both rules. Right? I've got to figure out which rule is actually turned on. So in this case, x is equal to negative 2. So is it that in that part of the domain, or is it in that part of the domain? Right? And we know that negative 2 is less than or equal to 1. So it's on that part of the domain. So my rule, my function, right, is f of x equals x. So that tells me that f of negative 2 is negative 2. All right, so one thing in, one thing out. That's how it's supposed to behave. f of 1, well, here x is equal to 1, right? And so what part of the, what part of the domain does that satisfy? We know that 1 is less than or equal to itself. So again, we're on that part of the domain. So f of x is equal to x. So if I put a 1 in there, right, what I get back is a 1. So f of 1 is 1. And then last but not least here, x is equal to 2. What part of the domain does that satisfy? Well, we know that 2 is greater than 1. So it satisfies that part of the domain. So what's the rule? f of x is 5. So in our case, what is f of 2? It's 5. So f of 2 is 5, f of 1 is 1 and f of negative 2 is negative 2. So we're still following, even though there's two different rules, I'm not finding two different outputs because that would destroy the fact that I'm a function. What I'm doing is determining which, which part of the domain am I considering, turning that rule on, and then using the rule. Okay, so that's how we find the points. We'll sketch this later, but let's keep practicing this. Uh, oops, I thought I had the next one right below it. Sorry about that. All right, and so in the next one, we got a new function. It's called g. Uh, by the notation that I'm using, I can see that it is a piecewise function. So let's go ahead and find the points that are being asked for. So the first one is g of negative 3. So in this case, x is equal to negative 3. Is that in this part of the domain or in that part of the domain? Well, here, right, we know that negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 1. So the rule that we need to use for this part g of x is x squared minus 4. And so now we just go back to what we've done before. I take negative 3, I put it in there, and it looks like we get 5. 
So g of negative 3 is equal to 5 for this piecewise function that's given. What about uh, g of um, negative 1? Well, here, let me write it up here. g is equal to negative 1, or excuse me, x is equal to negative 1. So does that satisfy that part or that part? Well, we know, right, that negative 1 is less than or equal to itself. So this is the rule that's turned on. So g of x is defined to be x squared minus 4 for this rule. So plugging in my value of x that I have, looks like we get a negative 3 as our output. Last but not least, we're looking for g of 1. Well, x is equal to 1. That satisfies that part of the domain, right, because 1 is greater than negative 1. So the function rule that's turned on is 2x plus 1. So finding g of 1, I put that in there, and what we get is 3. All right, so one thing in, one thing out. Figure out what's part of the domain that we are on that determines which rule we use, and then we just plug in things like we did way back in the day. Uh, H, I'm trying to get a little harder here, but it's still a piecewise function, but there's basically three different rules that are turned on depending on which piece of the domain that I'm at. So again, right, for this first one, x is equal to negative 1. So which part of the domain does that satisfy? Well, we know that negative 1 is less than or equal to 0. So the function rule that's turned on for this guy is the x plus 5 rule. So h of negative 1 would be negative 1 plus 5. We're getting a 4 out of that. In this next one, x is equal to 0. Well, there you go, right? The rule h of x is basically equal to 2, all right, at that value. So that means that h of 0 is 2. Okay, and then last but not least here, we have x equals to 3. And so that satisfies the um, idea that 3 is greater than 0. So there's the piece that we're on. So our function rule is x minus 4. So finding h of 3, we plug 3 in there, and what we get is negative 1. So that value right there is negative 1. Okay, so there's, how, there's the notation and basically how to use it. Now let's go back, right, and how do I actually... You know, uh, what we've done for three functions is we've actually found just three input and output values. We found three ordered pairs. So how do I actually put this together, right? So we have something like this, right? What's the picture, right? What is, what's the graph of this piecewise function? What's the graph of this piecewise function? And we'll do that in the next video since this one's getting a little lengthy. And uh, we'll take it from there. I'll, sh I'll show you how to graph a piecewise function. See you guys in the next video.